welcome to UAPB Currents. I'm your host, Shelley Roby Ingram, and today our guest is Dr. Lenore Schultz, who is the Executive Director for the Southeast Arkansas Arts and Science Center right here in Pine Bluff. Yes. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Shelley. Now, you're the Executive Director for, the, like I said, the Southeast Arkansas Arts and Science Center mm -hmm. here in Pine Bluff on Main Street, and I want you to introduce yourself to our community because you're new here to Palm Bluff yes. and let everybody know a little bit about you and how you came to be a new Palm Bluff resident. Well, first of all, I'm so excited to be here. Um, the Arts and Science Center is really unique because it has the museum, it has art galleries, it has science, and it has the theater. And that's a pretty rare combination have all those in the facility. The museum is also an accredited museum with the American Association of Museums, which is one of, it is the highest actually level that a museum can achieve. Okay. Um, this museum's one of only, it's fewer than 800 museums out of about 18,000 museums in the United States. Okay. And we have that accreditation. So I had been through that process, which since we're coming up for that again, um, I knew how to be able to guide an institution through that. My early career, my very first career, um, following uh, my bachelor's degree in art history and art education, I landed just in the right place at the right time. I was in Atlantic City, New Jersey, before uh, gambling passed, and I knew how to sew. So I ended up actually um, in wardrobe there. I ended okay. up running the wardrobe there. I ended up doing wardrobe in the Caribbean. I ended up doing Broadway show tours around the United States. So. For about 12 years, I did professional level wardrobe and sometimes props and ended up marrying a man whose parents had given him a farm in Batesville, Arkansas. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I moved to Arkansas. I thought it was a good idea to move to Arkansas. Uh, loved it here, stayed here, ended up raising a family, ended up running my own businesses. And when my daughter went to college, I went to a different college okay. and went back for graduate work. I got a master's in mass communications, a PhD in heritage studies. Um, ended up working in museums. My last job was at Arkansas State University Museum. And the opportunity came up here because this museum is one of seven partner museums in the Arkansas Discovery Network, which is funded by the Donald W. Reynolds Foundation. And so I was already familiar with the museum. I was already familiar with the work. The job opportunity came along, and here I am. Okay, now what is the Arkansas Discovery Network? Okay, Arkansas Discovery Network is um, actually how we end up with all these incredibly cool science exhibitions. Okay. The network um, recognized the need to be able to bring um, high quality children's hands-on learning opportunities to the state of Arkansas. And so there are seven partner museums. Um, the Ar Arts and Science Center is one of them. And uh, a little bit later, we'll visit about the exhibition we currently, we just opened this last Saturday. Okay. Now, what are some of the things, I guess, that drew you to the Arts and Science Center here that you said, oh, you looked at it and said, oh, I can do this and I can do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, the facility is absolutely exquisite. It is a beautiful building. It is aesthetically pleasing. It is the hub of a culture, really. And in fact, the Clinton School of Public Service had just done an analysis of uh, the Arts and Science Center in relation to the audiences here. And many people viewed it as that hub to go to. It was this meeting place for culture. And even more interestingly to me, it was across the usual um, barriers. It's usually, this is just an art gallery, this is just a science museum, this is just the performing arts, and it's one big wonderful stew mm -hmm. of culture and opportunity. Okay. Now, what are some of the current projects and things that you all have going on at the Arts and Science Center, or some of the <laughs> projects that, that you run I guess on a continuous basis. Well, the, one of the reasons why the place is so exciting is because there's always something new going on, there's something new that we're working on, there's something new that we're just opening. So for example, we just opened an exhibition on Saturday. Arkansas First Lady Ginger Beebe was here to cut the ribbon on the exhibition. And it is art meets science through architecture. Okay. And there are architectural renderings, 
There are about 15 buildings. It's the original blueprints for those buildings that are important uh, really over about the last century here in Pine Bluff. And then we also opened, as that children's science aspect, um, Arkansas Rocks, Rivers, and Road Cuts. And it talks about all that stuff that's underneath the ground that you have to take into consideration when you build the building above the ground. Oh, okay. So it's kind of a tie-in with the adult project and yes. the children's projects both being about structural things. Exactly. Okay. And what are some of, I guess, the other things that you all have? I know Live at Five, which is a music aspect. Yes. That you all also add to the Arts and Science Center. Is that something that's usual, I guess, for these types of museums? Well, museums want to do all different kinds of things to engage the community. And actually, uh, Pat Hopkins has been on the staff for a number of years at the Arts and Science Center. She has really grown this baby. It's live at five, and she has uh, different uh, performers come in. There's a lot of blues, a lot of jazz. Um, once a month, it's the first Friday of every month from f five to seven. There is a fee for it, but a very small fee. And she sets up this fabulous club atmosphere, mm -hmm. and it's just absolutely a marvelous um, time to come to and the next one will be November 4th and in fact it's the UAPB Jazz Ensemble that's going to be playing. Okay well great so we'll make sure that everybody's coming out um, to see our jazz ensemble yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and hear them they're a great organization. Um, so tell us a little bit more I guess about some of the member benefits and things like that that or how you can become a member of the arts and science center because that's imperative right it's imperative because uh, the membership really functions in a couple ways of course it brings in fees although some of the memberships are, are, are not very expensive at all but it also indicates support for this cultural hub and so the members are very important to us and I'm sure you'll have a scroll at the bottom of the screen where people <laughs> can call the phone number to get more information. Oh, right. We're going to get ready to go to break and when we come back we're going to talk about um, how the Arts and Science Center is, is run and how it stays in operation and things with the support of people like you out there in the community and I'm sure from other private and public entities. So we'll be right back on UAPB Currents. Listen, I know you're upset, but it was just one date. And dating's like the stock market. Uh, there's uh, ups and, and downs and, and, and ups. And so always buy low. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America, let's get healthy together! <laughs> I'm home and I love it. I'm home. I'm home where I belong. It's always nice to come home, but many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making home affordable from the U.S. government has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home. I'm home where I belong. Welcome back to UAPB Currents, and again, we're joined by Dr. Lenore Schultz, who's the Executive Director at the Southeast Arkansas Arts and Science mm -hmm. Center. And we were just talking about becoming a member at the Arts and Science Center here in Pine Bluff. And uh, one of the things that you were telling me during the break, um, and that I want you to make sure that you make a point of to the people in the community is that becoming a member is important, but that's not what you said is the most important thing. Emma. Right. The most important thing is coming to the Arts and Science Center. Right. Uh, we are in the really remarkable position that it's free admission. We have a lot of people who believe in what we do. We have a lot of generous support. We want members, don't get me wrong, we desperately want members, but the fact is 
admission or membership is not a barrier. We want everyone to come to the events that we have there, especially the um, exhibitions that are in the galleries that are for family and are targeted for children. Right. It's not something that you don't have to be a member. Correct. To come. You do not, you not do have not to be have a member to, be a to come. Member. And especially those children. See, um, we have been the happy recipients of a quite a few grants lately. They're little grants, but they're grants that are allowing us to be able to have hands-on activities in the galleries. They're targeted towards children because, you know, school's easy for the kid who can read really well and who can write really well. School's not so easy for the child that has a difficulty with reading, difficulty with writing. And one of the things that we're able to offer is hands-on interactive learning where they're learning where it's so much fun they don't realize they're learning, mm -hmm. where it's what I like to call we've laid out a line of breadcrumbs between the starting point and what we want them to learn and they don't even realize that they're learning sometimes very sophisticated concepts and all of that is free. I might add we have terrific support from the Pine Bluff Community Foundation. Okay. We have a lot of very generous um, corporate sponsorship. Uh, the Jefferson Regional Medical Center. There's a lot of partners who have stepped up to the plate so that kids can come in and do this stuff for free. So this last weekend they were exploring, um, for example, why would there be shark's teeth in Arkansas? Okay. Well, because Arkansas used to be underneath an ocean and the shark's teeth were actually fossilized and so we were making shark's tooth necklaces, fake shark's tooth necklaces. <laughs> You know, the week before we were exploring sedimentary rock. This coming week we're going to be exploring plate tectonics. And so these are really fun things because when they do the plate tectonics, they do it with cookies and chocolate frosting. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun. And they don't realize that they've just absorbed a very sophisticated scientific concept. Okay, and so some of the, who are some of the people that play a role in the background of these these events and, and planning because who would come up that, with the idea of doing plate tectonics with cookies, with cookies and, and frosting? frosting. Okay. That was something that actually came to us through the Arkansas Discovery Network. I am not a scientist. Okay. In fact, I am a very terrible scientist. So actually that means I'm a really good person to try to figure out whether or not I think it's cool. Okay. Because I did the cookie frosting thing and I was like, this is really cool, this is really fun. And so when we were gonna have the exhibition here, I got hold of the educator who had actually done that at a conference and they gave the session again through the Arkansas Discovery Network so we could figure out the cookie frosting plate tectonic thing. Okay, <laughs> and I know that you don't do everything on your own, that you have Heavens boards no. <laughs> and committees and groups right. and also a staff. Right. That works at the Arts and Science Center. So tell us a little bit about some of those other behind the, the scenes people. Right? Well, we have a fabulous, fabulous uh, board of trustees. And the board of trustees is drawn from people all across the community. Okay. And then there are committees and committees and committees and committees. But the, but the main committees that I deal with on a more regular basis are, for example, the Education Committee, and that's Dr. Bill Detmers right here on this campus. Okay. Um, we have a Performing Arts Committee, we have an Exhibitions Committee, we have a Collections Committee, and we meet and we are able to both bring ideas in, disseminate ideas out, and get input. Um, for example, on that Education Committee, we have volunteers that are coming in over the course of the different Saturdays. We're offering free Saturday events, these hands-on activities. Okay. And so we're able to pull volunteers. We're able to sometimes pull donations. Somebody says, that's a great idea. How can I help? And um, a checkbook is always very helpful. <laughs> we also have um, an endowment board. We're really fortunate that uh, wise, wise people before me set up an endowment so that we receive some funding from that each year. Okay, and are most of the people on these committees, are they local here to Pine Bluff? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, Absolutely. And but the Art Center serves the southeast region of yes. Arkansas and not just Pine Bluff. So yes. those of you who are seeing this on the internet, we want you all to, you know, come to the Arts and Science Center as well. This is not just our baby, but it's for the Delta region. Well, and we do have board members, um, for example, Dr. David Rainey in Dumas is okay. on our board. So we do try to reach out across that whole Southeast Arkansas region and engage people both to come in and us to go out and to have people on our board. 
Now, do you all do mobile programming or, or occasionally we do outside occasionally of the we do. arts and science? Center? Yes, when we're able to write a grant, <laughs> there, you know, it, it's always that mix of a great idea and funding it. Right. When we're able to write a grant, we absolutely want to do that outreach out to the community, and we're going to be doing more of that. In fact, I'm in dialogue now with David Radio for the Dumas. <laughs> okay, and that's something since you know, of course, we want the the member the people in the community of Pine Bluff to come out and take part in the things that are being offered at the Arts and Science Center, but you corporate organizations who would like to take a part in helping the people that work for yes. you, then I'm sure you all aren't opposed <laughs> to the idea I of, would welcome of a any more corporate <laughs> sponsorship. So who would those entities um, contact if Me. they wanted they would contact you directly yes. at the number on the screen yes. and yes. then she'll gladly accept any donation <laughs> that your organization would like to make so mm -hmm. that the children of this community will be able to keep on taking advantage Absolutely. of the things that you all offer. Absolutely. Now you mentioned the Saturday classes that mm -hmm. you all offer. What kind of things are taking place during those Saturday classes? Right now, um, you know, typically the classroom that we have is, is in the back. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've done is we're moving things to the front. Okay. The educator is out in the gallery now okay. so that when a parent comes in with their children, there's somebody there who can explain what's going on, especially with the scientific things. Um, the things that we're doing on Saturday afternoons are in the gallery and anybody can walk in the door and involve uh, their kids or enjoy it quite frankly sometimes older people want to jump in and play just as much as the little kids with them and we've had a great group of volunteers with SOS okay. it's high school students who have been coming in and they've been just absolutely wonderful and I think that the younger kids like to engage with that high school level and age exactly. student Okay. When we come back after the break, then I want to talk a little bit more about some volunteer opportunities. Sure. Because I know that's something that really runs an uh, organization yes. like this, the people in the community getting involved. So we'll be right back on UAPB Currents to find out how you can help the Southeast Arkansas Arts and Science Center. <music> George, look what I found. <laughs> Turn their curiosity into a lifelong love of learning. That's a periscope. <laughs> it's one of the most important gifts you can share. <laughs> Create a curious reader. Oh, you want to build a castle like that one? <laughs> this is super bedtime reading. Share a book together today. Visit read.gov. I really didn't want to tell anybody, and I didn't. Hiding sadness makes you more and more sad. If you're strong enough to just open your mouth, that's all it takes. The healing is in me and can also be extended to others. Giving voice to what you're feeling is part of the healing. Welcome back to UAPB Currents, and again, we're joined by Dr. Lenore Schultz, who is the Executive Director at the Southeast Arkansas Arts and Science Center. And she's about to tell us how you can become a part of the Arts and Science Center as a volunteer and work with the community. Right. Well, we have a very small staff, and so the truth is um, we, would, we would not be able to open our doors without volunteers, mm -hmm. both the volunteers who, um, of course, as we said, help financially mm -hmm. but we also have volunteers who help at the front desk we have volunteers who help with every single special event we have a group of volunteers called art crew that do all of the gorgeous receptions that we put on mm -hmm. and we also really need those volunteers who think it's a good idea to actually be in a room with oh, 50 to 100 kids on field trips <laughs> <laughs> because we need help when we have big 
groups come in. Okay. Um, and so anybody really that would like to have a volunteer opportunity, if it's just for a special event, if it's an ongoing basis, if it's one day a week, if it's maybe they have their best friend or their spouse, that they say, let's go do something together, we definitely have an opportunity that would be available and they could just look at the number on the bottom of the screen and right. contact us. And it's not something that anyone has to have any special training for or anything like that. Do you all say if I wanted to come and help plan a reception, I don't have any background in decorating or anything right. like that. Is there, are you going to guide me through? Well, with the receptions, I mean, I'm telling the art crew is so incredible. They, they just, they just take care of it. And mm -hmm. so they would actually ask what they needed of the person. Right. But with something, for example, as an educational opportunity, we clearly train and, and are very specific about what we need and how we engage, you know, with the public. The most right. important thing really is that somebody actually either likes what I call the front of the house. I sort of look at a museum like the, the front stage and backstage. Mm -hmm. And if you like people, then it's good for you to be with people. Right. If you don't like people so much, maybe you want to work in collections. Maybe you think that um, detailed documentation, maybe uh, working with that collection and there's a lot of care that goes into a collection. There are also opportunities there. There are student internship opportunities okay. there. We we really could use some student interns. <clears throat> Pardon me. Especially, for example, somebody that um, liked that more detailed kind of work. Okay. Um, we need help in front of the house and behind the scenes. We also uh, go out and um, sort of do our volunteer part throughout the community. You know, either. Uh, through public speaking and telling people about the Arts and Science Center or participating in community events. Um, for example, Maggie McIntyre, our educator, will be participating at Boo on the Bayou. Okay. And so we try to, that volunteerism is both ways. Okay, of course. Now, what are some of the things that you spoke about, you know, backstage and things like that, that you all have coming up for this season? Because I know, as you said, you all have not only exhibits in the museum, right. but plays and the music events that take place and the classes, and there are so many things right. that are always going on, but what are the, some of the things that the audience can try to keep track of to keep them busy, because the holidays are coming right. up, and kids will be out of school, and there'll be opportunities for everybody to come out and enjoy the Arts and Science Center. Well, we have a number of things um, in the performing arts area. In December, we will have our, our production of Christmas Bells. It's um, it basically, it, it is a, a Christmas celebration run amok. It's a comedy. It'll be directed by Fran Austin. In fact, um, the, let's see, the performance is December 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Okay. And um, at, before that in December, we're going to have another Live at Five, of course, Pat Hopkins event, and it's going to be Carrie and Rich, and they'll be doing a Rhythm and Blues Christmas. Okay. Uh, Ligoria Payton and Friends will be doing a jazzy Christmas on December 3rd. Okay. And so we have a lot of really exciting holiday stuff that's coming up. And then, as you mentioned, during the holidays, you're looking for something to do with the kids if they're home. And we will be open and they can bring the kids out and they can do the different hands on exhibits that we currently have in place. Okay. Now, what are the hours? since you said you guys will be open. Right. What are the hours of operation for the Arts and Science Center? And when are you not open? I'm of course right. I'm sure that, right. you know, Yeah, we won't be there Thanksgiving Day, and we will right. not be there Christmas Day. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and, and I should know right off the top of my head the days that we're closed at Christmas, but I can't tell you that. I know we're closed Thanksgiving and the day right. after Thanksgiving. But for example, we will be open the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Okay. And we're open uh, Monday through Friday from 10 to 5, and Saturdays from 1 to 4. Okay, Monday through Friday, 10 to 5, uh -huh. and Saturdays from 10 to 4. 1 to 4. 1, One to, to 4. 4. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> not 10, 1 to 4. Okay, um, what are some of the um, special, I guess, children's, is the children's exhibit that's going on now, the, what did you say it was? Arkansas Rocks, Rocks Rivers, and Road Cuts. Rocks, Rivers, mm -hmm. and Road Cuts, and how long will that exhibit be? That'll going? be there through March. Okay. That'll be there so through March. that'll be plenty of opportunity for you guys mm -hmm. to get out there and do that and something that on the holiday break, because the kids are always out before we are. They oh, always get, oh, yes. get lucky and they get out a little bit before we are, and it's something that, you know, they can come out and, mm -hmm. and do and participate in. Now, now, do you all facilitate if um, classes or groups want to come out, say for field trips yes, and things like absolutely. that? Yes, absolutely. Same thing. 
number on the bottom of the screen, and they can just contact Maggie McIntyre or just anyone to say, we'd like to plan a field trip, and we absolutely encourage field trips. To, and if they're uh, further out, they can discuss with us if they need financial assistance to okay. be able to bring us, say, a bus load from a public school, because the Arkansas Discovery Network, funded by the Donald W. Reynolds Foundation, has a little uh, bit of scholarship money where we're able to help with that. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. well, that's a wonderful. It's thing. incredible. That's, it's incredible. That's yeah. absolutely that wonderful. That partnership is invaluable. Okay, so see, there's no absolutely <laughs> no reason that anyone should have for not coming to the Correct. Southeast Arkansas Arts and Science Center. That's right. It's free. It's free. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> there's stuff going on do all the time. Have, do we have another F? <laughs> <laughs> it's free and it's fun, and there's always something going it's on. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. <laughs> okay, that's a great one. And there's always something different going on yes. for everyone. So if you don't necessarily want to look at, you know, some of the absolutely awesome artwork that's there, and uh, you all have a lot of artwork that's done by locals that's mm -hmm. on exhibit yes. there as well as, you know. Although the, we have another exhibition that's coming up that's actually uh, the Rosen Swag exhibition is a biennial. Okay. It'll be opening at the beginning of December. Okay. It'll be there for a few months and that actually draws artists from about seven states okay. around here. Yes. All right. So it's free, it's fun, it's and fabulous. it's fabulous <laughs> and is open from 10 to 5 on Monday, Monday through, through Friday, Friday and 10 to 4 on one to four on one to 4 I keep saying 10 to 4 because uh, maybe they're going to change their hours <laughs> when they get more uh, volunteers. I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know. It's just I just keep wanting them to be open at 10 even though I'm in the bed at 10 on Saturdays. But And I'm sure you all are as well because you're so tired from all the awesome things <laughs> no, actually, we're, we're, we're down there getting ready for oh, 1 o'clock to for open. One That's right. right. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much, Dr. For Schultz, for coming and talking with us, and we hope to see you all soon at the Arts and Science Center. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on UAPB Current.